Welcome to Constitutionalist Politics Podcast, aka CTP, in association with Savage Unfiltered Podcast, TheLibertyBeacon.com, and I am your host, Joseph M. Leonard, and that's L-E-N-A-R-D. CTP is your no muss, no fuss, just me, you, and occasional guest type podcast. As Graham Norton would say, let's get on with the show! I'm going to start before introducing my guest with a bit of a disclaimer or preface for this episode. And why should Christians listen, despite the fact that I have a professed atheist on, (laughs) in in a thoughtful way as I can say this, first and foremost, of course, Christians are not supposed to hate anybody, (laughs) right? And you are not supposed to paint any group of people with a broad brush, whether that be all Christians or all people who use the atheist tag. We are all, as Martin Luther King said, Junior, all individuals and need to be judged on each content of character. So please give this episode a fair hearing. Uh, Because again, you know, not painting with a broad brush. I know some atheists that I wouldn't want to have waste my time of day with being around. But to be fair, I know some fellow Christians that are (laughs) quite a pain in the butt and no fun to be around either, wouldn't want anything to do with them. So to be fair on that, we're not here to argue, is there a God or isn't there a God? That's not what we're here for. (laughs) We're here to find some common ground because if you try to push viewpoints at gunpoint, you just get more resistance. You're never going to get any more trying to force something onto someone. So for those willing to give this a fair hearing, welcome to the show, Elizabeth Enton. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much for having me. And first of all, I will just add to the disclaimer that, and I know it both within atheism and some atheists are very, very rude. I don't at all disrespect what some people believe. I mean, and that goes across the board with other set beliefs. I think the nature of consciousness, all of that is one of the most complex questions that possibly could be there. So we're going to disagree and to dislike someone for having a different viewpoint on one of life's biggest mysteries is ridiculous so there's no need to ever be rude to each other and again i've seen atheists be very rude at times as well so yeah all of us yeah rude there's people are rude people bad apples you know in virtually any bunch mm-hmm. right <laughs> right right and i'll add i have an interesting take on atheism because while i don't think there's a god i do think there's an afterlife and that is kind of how i even got publicly defining myself as an atheist before because I grew up in a very secular culture and so it just was a the default setting it wasn't like you know I mean the most outspoken atheists tend to have come from a strong religious belief and then realize that's not what they think and then are very outspoken about their atheism so me it was just the default and then I started to think after a personal loss the passing of my father Is there any way I could think there could be a form of an afterlife? And to me, well, my cat is sticking his little butt in the camera. Your beautiful little fur baby wants on camera. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, He has to say hi. Um, I started to investigate if there was any, what I would consider valid evidence of an afterlife. And I found a lot of scientific evidence that I think shows that we do survive bodily death but i have do not think there's a god so that's really where i speak about my atheism and then i have a podcast about it and a book and rather than it's not probably the typical what someone would call typical atheist podcast and that i'm not um discussing atheism as much as trying to reach people who 
think there's zero chance of an afterlife who are dealing with heavy grief and maybe some are terminal themselves. So that's really who I speak to. And, you know, I mean, I have had some religious people as well who maybe have had a really profound loss and, you know, hopefully it just reaffirms for them that someone like me who is an atheist thinks there's an afterlife. So I more speak about my atheism to give people comfort rather than challenge anyone's beliefs. Right. And for those watching on the video sneak peek at <laughs> YouTube or Rumble, what's your fur baby's name there? Well, I will show him to everyone officially. Oh, come on. This is Kiwi. <laughs> and he's incredibly sweet. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I oh. my last cat died a few years ago. And oh, I haven't gotten any more new mm -hmm. pets. I don't mm -hmm. see bringing a kitten in and having the cat outlive me and, you know, have to then be rehomed. But right. anyway, before today officially coming together to discuss these things, I mentioned Penn of Penn and Teller because, again, Athe not all hate not all atheists. Oh, we're not all bad. <laughs> not, not all atheists hate Christians. And Penn is another wonderful example of he just doesn't believe in God, but he also confides that some biblical tenets are just common sense and part of being a good human, right? You don't have to believe in a God to understand thou shalt not murder. I don't murder you, you don't murder me. I don't have a right to steal your stuff. And as Payne would say, he has no right to steal our stuff. And it would be nice if the government would stop stealing from all of us. So, <laughs> so there are definitely things we could come together on. Please tell us a little, again, the uh, the name of the book and a little bit more um, about that. I assume I can't, I will say the name of this being a Christian show. I will refer to it as WTF just happened <laughs> to be respectful. <laughs> um, and WTF just happened is the book as WTF just happened to sciencey skeptic explores grief healing and evidence of an afterlife and the podcast is wtf just happened all about the afterlife no woo and again to respect i know some christians don't really like the f word so just respect so people heads up i say it out loud in full both in the book and the podcast so if that's something you're not comfortable with I, you know i do want to I, no, I understand. But yeah, I generally keep my language pretty clean <laughs> during the show, too. Right. But I'm also co-host of Savage Unfiltered. So okay, okay. Yes, we go very unfiltered <laughs> there. <laughs> I just know the only um, group who I've offended with that word have been some Christians who I had someone more Christian on and they wrote in the comments that they didn't appreciate that word so i mean i use that word but you know i don't I, people have a right if if i'm in a group speaking to a culture where that word is not acceptable which i've never really been around even the christians i know i want to make sure i'm respectful to people's what people would be comfortable with so yeah yeah i'm i'm i use it <laughs> as a point of emphasis in sentences on occasion myself. I don't, and like in my book, Terror Strikes Coming Soon to a City Near You, there's a little subsection on language that there are a whole lot of other things. Now, like, I can understand a Christian being upset with taking the Lord's name in vain, but okay. other curse words, they're really just words. And I don't understand why so many indeed get just so upset and bun out of shape. Unless if there are children around, then of course, obviously, we should be mindful and, and watch our language, right? Right. And yeah, I guess for me, 
it, it depends the culture you grew up in growing up well I was secular Jewish um where we celebrated it as a culture but not religion my dad he's the one who passed he had the filthiest mouth since I was a little kid so but you know I knew there were like words you don't say when you go to school or other people's homes but again growing up in New York City there weren't the taboos around that word and I think different cultures have different taboos around certain language but for me I don't care what words you say it's the content and meaning behind them so are you using a word like just jokingly or pops into your language or are you putting a sentence structure together to demean other people or hurt people so it's really what are what is your heart behind the words you're saying that I feel so no that sounds reasonable Uh, and this is kind of off the beaten path but Uh, since we're talking about afterlife, have you yourself in, uh, I I don't want to use the word spiritual, but had a instance or occurrence of aberrations appearing or anything like that, that makes you tend to believe in the afterlife or I have had those experiences. I wouldn't, I'll share them in a second, but I'm going to just give a disclaimer that that is not what makes me think. And I never use the word believe. I think there's a preponderance of evidence that an afterlife is highly probable. That is based on multiple, multiple things. Masses of data and research conducted by places such as the Division of Perceptual Studies that reached certain, ah, I'm stumbling on my words, excuse me. A research center through the University of Virginia, for example, and they have a child psychiatrist who studies cases of children reporting past life memories. They have Dr. Bruce Grayson, who is a traditional psychiatrist, and he studies people who report near-death experiences, which is where they are clinically dead for a percentage of time and are resuscitated through medical means so that my own experiences getting a lot of medium readings getting to befriend the mediums and the researchers studying them and all of that coming together combined with a few really weird what I call WTFs that happened to me I saw my dad once briefly and I jumped it was early on I really really wish I had stopped and talked to him I still hadn't really processed his passing so I can't deny it was brain neurons seeing someone I'm used to, but it felt a little different. Um, I've had some interesting dreams and I have what are referred to as signs. I don't know if you're familiar with signs from the other side. That's like when people will hypothetically possibly are ones who've passed send us signs. And I have had remarkable signs from my dad and sadly my mentor passed away too. So I had some interesting experiences too. So I'm happy to share any of those or right well you mentioned uh previous life experience uh situations the bible itself really does not preclude reincarnation it doesn't Uh, most Uh christians for whatever reason automatically just reject that as a notion but a one soul eternity life can be completely different than that soul spending different times in different bodies on the planet. It's not ruled out. And of course, some other faith have a big, big belief in indeed the issue of reincarnation. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just, what's interesting, it's interesting you say that about Christianity, not precluding it or ruling it out because materialism even when i was complete atheist thought i mean so concerned myself with atheist but consciousness when i thought there was no afterlife consciousness was created by brain neurons and that was it i reincarnation was the first thing i thought could be possible well first i was reading about einstein's theories of time relativity and quantum entanglement and then the very first thought i had was well if consciousness is created by our brain neurons firing, and that has happened once, what is to preclude that from happening again? And maybe it would happen in 10,000 years. I mean, if time could go on eternally, I, you know, there's big bangs, big crunches, and let's say that happens eternally. Why could another set of brain neurons 
not create another conscious human that I would get to experience. Not me as Liz, not my father as him. I wouldn't have the same people. It would just be a coincidence of firing brain neurons that would still be a consciousness that was a me and no karma, no nothing to it. And when your only other thought your whole life is that you're conscious once and then you're permanently obliterated, that was a pretty fantastic option. And I started to Google that. And that's where I found doctors, Jim Tucker and the late Dr. Ian Stevenson, who study cases of kids with past life memories through the University of Virginia. And then from there, that just opened the doors to all this research. Yeah. And uh, I haven't had enough sleep, so my brain and mouth aren't cooperating either. So <laughs> back after this recording, I, I'm probably going to go lay down and take a nap. But oh, good. yeah, oh, I now now I remember the train's back on the track. Uh, and then it's gone again. Not reincarnation, but uh, oh, science, the science, science. issue. Uh, plenty of doctors and studies have indeed dealt with the out of body experience people who've had of, you know, like being in surgery and have flatlined and observed their own resuscitation. So again, it you don't have to be spiritual or believe in a faith or even a God to understand indeed there is scientific uh, evidence, if you want to call it that, or I, you know, at least scientific theory behind the concept that yes, there is is something more than just this current physical existence we have. And that's kind of what you're talking about is a, without the belief in God, still believing in an afterlife, because uh -huh. there seems to be a whole lot more and more science agreeing with that. Definitely. Yeah. And I just don't think a God is necessary. All it really seems to be. Well, first of all, there's a bunch of just data, evidence, personal experiences that the survival of consciousness is the most likely. I don't think a God is necessary for that. I haven't seen evidence of a God. I see evidence, no problem. I just have ne never, ever seen it. It seems like a huge jump and why, again, with no disrespect, this is just how I think things. I don't look down anyone who'd think otherwise, but like why a Judeo-Christian God over a Zeus? I mean, it's all like, why? You know, who was it? I forget someone I, it could have been Ricky Gervais to Stephen Colbert, but I could be wrong. He said to him, because Stephen Colbert is a Catholic and believes very much in God, and Ricky Gervais is an atheist. And Ricky Gervais said, well, think of all the gods you don't believe in. I just don't believe in one more. So, I mean, I, and that's kind of, I just, I, a god is absolutely not necessary to how the world works and to survival of consciousness and if consciousness is non-local and quantum entangles with our brains the same way a cloud the cloud downloads to our phones and to our laptops so yeah, it just seems like a complete jump and a complete kind of trying to put things together the way you know ancient Greece put together Zeus and Athena and I don't know enough about the the ancient Greek or Roman gods to properly comment on that. I just know the very basics going way yeah. back to fifth grade, each, but. Each throughout time all seem to have mm -hmm. uh, e even non-monotheolistic gender 10, ten uh, God, I can't talk either. <laughs> I know both of us. <laughs> I feel like I'm ten, stumbling over my words too. Tend to have a creator God and other gods, whereas monotheism, it's, you know, all those things of control over nature and whatever else are, are the one. But tell, how what made you decide to, did the book come first or your show? Book was being written first, way before my show. 
My show started over quarantine and I just thought I love to sit and ask all these people questions. Suddenly everyone and their mother was putting out a podcast and they weren't so good. They weren't so professional. You heard the sirens. So I was like, okay, the standard has gone down. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a professional studio or editor. Let me do this. And I had time to learn to edit. So I just did it. And I thought, eh, I'll do this little project on the side. And maybe it'll help promote my book, but it ended up getting a following and I've ended up loving it and getting to sit and talk to people I just dream of talking to and have held captive and getting to answer my questions for two hours or an hour. So these are people I just want to sit and pound with all these questions about topics I find fascinating. So the podcast launched first, book was planned and written way before that, but the book didn't publish until after the podcast. Uh -huh. But they kind of correlate or correspond with each other for the most part. They're pretty much. The, yeah, the book is my story and part two is coming out soon. The book is from 2015 when my dad first got sick and it was clear he was going to be in hospice all the way through around mid 2018. The first batch of research I did thinking there is zero chance of an afterlife to thinking Afterlife's highly probable. The people I met, it's my personal story while I share what I'm learning, who I met. And then my next book is going to be from 2018 through like the start of 2021, because I've just gathered more evidence, deeper friendships and relationships with the people along the way, more friendships, more just WTFs <laughs> that have added to my experience. Yeah, I I think I asked, I don't remember, though, if I've gotten links from you to your book page or to your podcast. So let people know the show name again and where where, where you're hosted out of which server, because uh, that's always the best place to hear a podcast. But no doubt it's carried by iHeart and Spotify and all them. It's everywhere and it's WTF just happened all about the afterlife. No woo. And my website is WTF just happened.net. And you can link to my book and you can link to all the places you can listen to my podcast. It's on every app hosted officially through Spotify. Okay. Yes. I want to make sure I get your website in the show notes. So thank you. I'll keep... email it to you too. I okay, think I did, yes, but that would be I'll great. <laughs> uh, and there's the book on Amazon only. Is there a Kindle? Or is there an Apple Nook, uh, Barnes and Noble Nook version, Apple Books version? All those right, are you right different? now it's just on Amazon, Amazon and Kindle, but I'm looking to get it on to nook and apple and i've got to get to that yeah they'll be soon yeah. yeah i use smash words to get my books onto other sites but unfortunately smash words has been gobbled up by some other company so it's not as easy and convenient for you to then use them but uh, you can check them out that you can get your book up to them who will then get it onto Barnes and Nobles and Apple Books for you. Or there's also ebooklaunch.com. Uh, you you okay. could take your manuscript and go through them without a whole lot of hassle or expense to have them put it on. Because yes, I, even though 80% of all books these days are sold by Amazon, we, of course, don't want to limit our options or our audience's options to be able to get their hands on our product. Very, yes, that's definitely true. Yeah, I have been wanting to get it to others. Sorry, there's Pickles now saying hello. So <laughs> Pickles is the Kiwi's brother. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I guess I can email you to send me the links to both those places because I do want it everywhere. So he agrees. He's really jumping in and giving his thoughts on this and he's thanking you. So uh, we we just get to hear him though. We don't get to see him. <laughs> you can see him too if you'd like. Pickles. Pickles, come here. 
Pickles, come here. Come here, Pickles. Uh, everyone wants to meet you. This is Pickles. Oh, there we go. Hi, Pickles. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> At what platform, again, back to the show, are you housed on Buzzsprout, Spotify? Spotify, Spotify. But yeah, you can hear it equally on any app or YouTube or, you know, Apple, all of the apps. Right, right. Once you get your show, you put your RS feed on the other platforms where it's like this show <laughs> is housed at Buzzsprout. But yeah, it's available on 14 different podcast platforms. I don't usually do a very long show because I'm still technically in my first season. And I figure if I go really long, it reduces the chances of someone taking, you know, an interest in a new show if I go three hours. So <laughs> I try to keep my time down to 20, 30 minutes, and we are 20 minutes in. But I, I don't want to short shift or thrift you either. Is there anything else that you would care you want to share? Um, I guess just since I'm speaking to a Christian audience, I know there are some Christians who've also had really tremendous, horrible losses who still find some of this research helpful because it just backs up what you're thinking and hopefully it also gives you comfort that the evidence is so strong that even an atheist has been convinced by it so any of you in deep grief i hope that adds to you know some however you seek your comfort okay well thank you elizabeth enton and one last time let's mention the book title and <laughs> yes book wtf just happened a Sciencey Skeptic Explores Grief, Healing, and Evidence of an Afterlife, and the podcast WTF Just Happened, All About the Afterlife, No Woo. So. All right. Thank you again for joining. I really appreciated you having us. I, I hope everyone stayed tuned in and gave the show and you a fair hearing. Because again, I mean, I know some that uh, will be, I'll get some nasty grams. <laughs> right oh. why in the world am i got an atheist on a christian show you know we're not we have to live and exist with each other on this planet yeah. and giving you a common courtesy to discuss common ground we have i think is fair and i hope others feel the same way and and tuned in so yes. thank you again for coming Thank you so much. Like and subscribe to Christitutionalist Politics Podcast and Savage Unfiltered. Uh, maybe even go back a few years and dig up some old The Patriot Angles. Share episodes. We need your help to grow the show. Thank you for having tuned into Christitutionalist Politics Show. If you haven't already, please check out my primary internationally available book, Terror Strikes coming soon to a city near you. Available anywhere books are sold or autographed copies are available online direct from me via terrorstrikes.info slash shop. And you can obviously learn more about the very non-traditional or fluffy style Christian book, but a Christian book nonetheless. Also, please tune in to Savage Unfiltered Podcast, of which I am a co-host, and be sure to check out more about today's discussion at thelibertybeacon.com, where my articles drop every Saturday. In addition to seeing the corresponding thelibertybeacon.com piece referenced in any episode of Constitutionalist Podcast, see to the show transcript on podcast platforms that provide access to it, like Buzzsprout at tinyurl.com slash Christitutionalist for additional bonus material there in the transcript. Thank you. Take care. God bless.